Hi guys, Alice Taylor down here at Lytham Golf Academy and today we're going to be checking out the new tailor-made M5 driver. Right then guys, so we've got M5 and M6 driver new to the marketplace and the big talk this year is injected twist face. Now what does that mean? So when we look at the club face on the two drivers, we can see these little red, what look like screws on the face, and TaylorMade were very clever with how they started the marketing by just showing these. When they're not, in fact, screws, they do come out, but they're not interchangeable. But what TaylorMade are doing now is they're individually making sure that each driver face is as fast as possible to the legal limit. So they're making every single driver face illegal and then they're removing the speed ports and putting resin behind the club face in various points to reduce the ball speed to keep everything within that legal limit. Now, still got the twist face technology that we saw in last year's model, but what TaylorMade are now claiming is that we're going to get more ball speed from across the club face than ever before. Right then guys, so obviously two models, we've got M5 and M6. Today's video is about the M5, which is the more adjustable of the two models. And when we have a close-up look at the M5, we can see on the bottom a new T-track, basically able to move the CG a little bit lower in the head, but also make the club head more forgiving. So we've still got slot on the face just to give that nice bit of extra forgiveness with on those off center strikes and as we turn the club head over very different looking from last year so still that carbon crown for me personally i prefer the look of this year's model i think more black on there looks a little bit more traditional but like with everything the big story is that injected twist face so let's see how m5 performs Right then guys, so the strap line for this year is everybody gets faster. For me, the big challenge is I don't think when we're hitting it out the middle, we can see any more ball speed. So I'm not necessarily expecting to see the ones I hit flush to maybe perform much better as we go model on model. But what I am expecting to see is a more consistent ball speed on those ones I don't quite strike. Therefore, maybe a more consistent distance and a better shot. But let's hit the shots and let's see if M5 lives up to the hype. Right guys, so I've got this set nine degrees. I've got a hazardous smoke 6.5 in this. Like I said, I love the look of it. Gonna hit lots and lots of shots, kind of give you some feedback on overall performance of the driver, but also maybe some of the ones where I don't strike it, show you where the strike's been and look at how that ball speed has been maintained or not maintained as tailor-made a claiming with this driver and along with M6. So like I said, I think it looks super behind the golf ball. Really do like the look of it. So that one felt just a little bit low off the club face. But for one that wasn't quite out the middle of the club, that looked pretty good performance wise. Again, felt a pretty solid one. Just turning over a little bit more, which kind of is more my shot. Getting out there distance wise, pretty good. Obviously the one negative is that I don't get to test this out in California where it's nice t-shirt weather and warm. We're a balmy six degrees down in Lytham today. So probably not gonna be swinging at my super quickest. But again, it does feel nice. It does feel really, really good. That one's certainly getting out there long. When we look at averages, you know, I'm not, never gonna hit everything flush out the middle of the golf club. But I would expect to be swinging this time of year maybe about 107, 108 mile an hour for club head. Maybe a touch slow because I'm going a little stiffer with shaft at the moment, trying to give me a little bit more control. But I do like the feel. 
And I do like the flight, nice and accurate there. And again, I always say anything that's getting out 290 to 300 for me would be round about what I would expect swinging at the speed that I swing. So let's hit two or three more and let's just see how they stack up. Again, felt pretty solid. If anything, maybe just a little bit low with the strike. I'm just setting up a little bit right. Quite coming back. But again, distance wise, good. And again, felt pretty solid. Take that all day long, it's nice and straight. Over 300 yards. So all in all there, like I said, I'll, I'll show the strikes, but not my best ball striking by any means, but the distances look pretty good. So I would hope there that the ball speeds would be fairly consistent. That's what Taylor made a claim in. You know, I know probably some of the quickest stuff I get, I get much closer to that 160. So on a good ball striking day, I'd expect my ball speed to be round about that 157, 158 at a push getting up to 160. Well, let's look at the numbers, look at some averages and see how TaylorMade M5 performs. Right, so the interesting thing for me there is there was a couple felt a little bit low on the club, but actually what we're seeing is that generally the strikes were slightly above center, which is good for me as a general rule. I'm hitting up on the ball and generally speaking there we're saying that my club path's very neutral and my club face is very neutral and what I do like this year is that the lie angle on the driver I'm able to deliver that I'm only very slightly toe up so pretty good now if we look at right so if we look at the average on the ball speeds I would say overall I thought my ball speed was just back a little bit on where I would expect now the really nice thing was look how consistent those ball speeds are though. Slowest at 150.6, quickest at 153.2. So they're all very, very close together. I said I was expecting my club head speed to be around about that 108. So at 107.1, pretty much as I would expect. So we look at the average there for how the driver performed. We saw an average ball speed of 152.2. So like I said, maybe just fractionally back on where I was expecting. Launch angle of 14 degrees, which I love. Average backspin at 2,145. So again, really, really nice low spin for me. Carry 266 and total 290. So all in all, M5 performing very, very solidly. Right then, so how did M5 perform? I thought I swung it at pretty much the speed I would expect. If I'm being honest, I was a tiny bit disappointed with my ball speed. Was kind of expected to be just a little bit quicker. But the one really, really pleasing thing was that the average ball speed was much, much closer. Now, like I said, I have seen drivers in the past where I've had, even at that club head speed, I've had my ball speed a little bit higher. Could argue with the strike being just a touch lower and a little bit less loft there, I might get a bit more speed. But all in all there, I thought pretty good solid ball speed, consistent ball speed really good performance from spin and launch and I definitely think for me the way I've got that set with one weight forward and one just very very slightly towards the toe just keeps the CG more in line with my just slightly high end toe strike but I think M5 is good you know it's a big price point on it I think recommended retail in the UK is around 499 so equivalent around the world from there so it's a big price tag now, do I think a lot of golfers are going to see an improvement on maybe last year's model? Probably not. I think we're only year on year seeing those small incremental changes. I think if you've got a driver that's maybe three, four years old, I think you are going to see a change. And I don't necessarily agree that the price point should be off-putting. I think a lot of golfers maybe change their irons every four or five years and would spend a lot more than that on a set of irons. So I think if you're happy with driver spending that amount, you should put it in the bag and if it helps you perform better, it's something that should be in the bag for a good space of time. 
But what do I think of M5? It's good, is it an improvement on last year's model? Yes, for forgiveness it is. The consistency of ball speed, I think, is better. I'm very, very interested with TaylorMade's claim that every single driver face is being done individually. I think it's a very bold claim. And I might do a video a little bit further down the line where I get two or three M5s together, same loft, set them up the same, and see how consistent the ball speed is. Because that's maybe what we're learning maybe about the older product is maybe the consistency of the manufacturing process meant was variable from driver to driver. But TaylorMade M5, yeah, good club. I'm gonna be testing M6 also today, so it'll be interesting to see whether M5 or M6 performs better for me. Would I put M5 in the bag on those numbers? Absolutely. Did feel as well that had a decent amount of control with it, which was great. So guys, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, like and share it. Comment below and I'll get back to as many of you as I can. Let me know if you're excited about the new TaylorMade drivers or you're excited about any of the other new stuff that's coming out. If you don't already, subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, both under Ali Taylor Golf. Hopefully catch up with some of you guys down here in the future. Stay in contact.